Hey friends, Mike here, March the 31st. I figured I'd take you guys out to the garden, kind of show you how things are going. What are you doing, Bones? He's always got to follow me. So everything's doing good. It's been a week since we planted everything. Uh, the weather here, we're getting a heat spike, which I'm kind of worried about that. It's going to be like 90 degrees today, uh, upper 80s for the next three days, and Monday they're talking 94, but then we're going to have a cool front come in, and that'll bring us back to the upper 70s, maybe upper 50s at night. Um, I just don't want a repeat of last year. We're just we're praying really hard for that. So <laughs> uh, let's take a look. Of course, poppies are starting to pop out of the ground. Our snow peas are doing amazing. We've been eating these on salads. I've just been eating them as a snack with a little vinaigrette. They're really delicious. Uh, the herbs are doing wonderful. Uh, we had lost our our time when we had that freeze, but Rochelle and I were out here last night. We just realized, wow, it just came back up. Of course, I've got to go through and, and weed everything, and I want to get all these leaves. But the garlic is looking good. There's fresh dill coming up. We planted some uh, lemon thyme. Garlic is doing good. The Italian oregano is amazing. Chives, rosemary, more chives. The arugula, the rocket, we planted, as you can see. Let me get down there close. The seeds are coming up. Uh, this is what the plant looks like when it's fully grown, but I had to go ahead and plant some more. More snow peas. We love these. Uh, now, in this bed, we did plant beans. No, I'm sorry. In this bed, we planted the, the Cha May Korean melons. These snow peas are not going to last very long. They don't really do very well in the heat and it's starting to get warmer. So as those are dying off, the Cha May Korean very sweet melon is going to be coming up. That'll climb the fence and they'll start to produce. Okay, in this bed, uh, remember how I told you guys that when I plant garlic, I plant them in like different sections. So as spring comes, I can plant tomatoes and other things right here we have radishes we showed you how to do that in the last video um isn't that cool the way it's growing i don't have to thin them there may be a couple seeds that i got in there last time i can just pull that one but they're all like little soldiers they're perfect in there i really don't have to thin this is the only time i really have to go in there and if there's two of them and I need a weed, guys. But there we go. That's it. There's no more. There's no more thinning. All I have to do is just let them grow, and then harvest them. Got a different varieties of cherry tomatoes. Again, this is the hard neck garlic. We've got a yellow pear tomato, which I really like that one. Now, that that shiny stuff right there, guys. It's vermiculite. Whenever I plant seeds. I put a little vermiculite on the top of there to kind of hold the moisture in. But uh, here's the um, the daikon, the red daikon radishes. They're coming up nice. More tomatoes. More tomatoes. Cilantro just randomly came up. I, I plant cilantro here every year. Uh, the elephant garlic, guys. I got to get that scape. You want to pull that scape, guys? I actually take these and I'll put them in a Ziploc and I'll put them in the freezer. You chop those up, they are so delicious. Add them to soups or whatever you're cooking. But the elephant garlic is looking amazing. I'm very excited. This is the first year that we've, we've done this. I'm definitely going to be planting onion gar or elephant garlic again. Along the fence, we planted different varieties of cucumbers. Uh, pickling cucumbers, Armenian cucumbers, beans. Kentucky Wonders, Asian Long Beans. Um, these onions are doing okay. Not as good as the ones in that bed over there, but that's that's okay. I really haven't showed you guys in a while, but what we do is, and this one doesn't really need it, but we call it ringing in the onions when you move the soil around. The root is all you need. That's going to let that onion grow, and, and it'll be all right. It's not going to it's not going to hurt it. Expose that bulb so it'll get bigger. 
More snow peas. So right here, guys, we have two bell peppers. This is a store-bought one. Big Bertha. This is a seeds that we started for Miss Lippy. She sent us some seeds on her bell peppers. I got to tell you, Lippy, these are doing a pretty amazing. So we'll we'll kind of test these out and we'll have an idea of how good this is going to grow. And if it does good, we're going to definitely save the seeds on this as well, too. I want to go ahead and remove these these flowers. I don't want that energy to go to the flowers. I want it to go to the roots. But that pepper is looking really good. We've got new growth. Really excited about that. More onions. Guys, I just planted four okra plants that we started from seed. This hot weather is really gonna be good for these. That's all we need is four. It's just Michelle and I. We'll probably end up processing them. Uh, these onions are doing really good. I'm really happy with these. Of course, we wrung them in. You can see that one right there. I want to make sure that the soil is away from the base. Of course, the wind is blowing them over. I did top these because we had those really bad uh, thunderstorms. But they're doing good, guys. I think they're going to... Um, They'll be pretty good size to harvest. Our five gallon pots are doing great. Of course, I've got a couple extra over here and over there. We're doing a new variety of a hot pepper, Havasu. We've got our sugar cane doing pretty well. I still have to build a raised bed for it, the horseradish. We have extra space to plant other plants that we're, that we're still uh, starting from seed. In the Hugo culture garden, we planted a bunch of different squash and melons. We actually have one popping up right here, but they'll pop up here as the weather gets warmer. Of course, we have we have some kind of squash or something growing in our compost, which is cool. Let it grow and we harvest something. Why not? Potatoes are doing really well. I need to get some mulch in there. We didn't have luck last year. I tried. We're going to plant the sweet potatoes in, in these two. I'll probably do that this weekend. The garden is doing well. We're very happy. We've got a lot of projects that we're going to be doing this weekend. Um, a lot of projects we'll film for you guys. We're going to be bringing in a whole bunch of about six yards of decomposed granite for the trail systems in the back. Uh, the weeds are starting to come up, um, but you know, we, we've got these projects that we're going to do. We're going to be increasing the patio over there. Uh, Miss Michelle wants like a hot tub or a spa or something. Um, so we, we've got a lot of projects going on. I just wanted to share with you real quick how everything is going. Miss Michelle's flower desert garden. Of course, guys, these are poppies. Miss Michelle is going to leave these. If I touch them, I'll be in trouble. She likes her poppies. They're popping up everywhere. We've got a lot of flowers, potato vines, lemongrass growing. What do you want? What you doing, Bones? <laughs> uh, we, we did a lot more herbs and landscape the past weekend. What I'm going to be doing tonight, guys, is I'm going to be foliar feeding. Let's talk about foliar feeding here real quick. Once or twice a week, I like to foliar feed. And what I do is, is I'll take a fish emulsion. I'll show you right here. Okay, 511. I'll take about a tablespoon and then I'll fill this sprayer up with water, rain water. Um, and then I'll pump it up and I'll spray the foliage uh, with the fish emulsion. It stinks, guys, but you know what? It really helps the plant. Um, really does fertilize, help the plant. Another thing that I'll add to it uh, is liquid seaweed. There's a compound in the liquid seaweed, guys, that strengthens the plant, it, it, it makes the foliage uh, more resistant to heat and cold. And we'll do that once a week. Again, a tablespoon of each, uh, spray the foliage, uh, and that will really help and benefit the plant's growth. You can see Miss Rochelle's poppies all over the place. All right, guys, it is time to plant our sweet potatoes. And I'll bring you in here closer. These are our regular sweet potatoes. And these are our Japanese purple. As you can see, I pulled them out of the soil and I put them in water so we could get more root growth. So I'm gonna bring you in here. These are 30 gallon flex pots. I'm gonna 
I'll bring you in and I'll show you how we're gonna do that. Guys, I'd like to do everything that I can organically, but there's times where you just, you gotta use some, some other products. This is calcium nitrate, everybody, uh, this is just the high nitrogen. Um, I already watered in a bunch of bone meal for phosphorus for the root growth. The soil is nice and moist, so I built this little trench. Put a little handful, cover that up, push it down a little bit. I don't want the roots to touch it. Okay. And we're gonna go ahead and get our slips. Now I do this on an angle, guys, because I want the plant to grow up the trellis. Now in our last video, uh, I did talk to you guys about increasing the size of this trellis. I haven't gotten to it. I might do that this weekend. I've got these really nice slips with the roots. Okay, and I'm just gonna cover this up. And the secret, guys, is you wanna keep everything very moist. I'll push that down. Now, as this grows up, then I'll be able to move this soil down, okay? Uh, and then I'll top it, once this is grown up and established, I'll top it with some, some mulch. Keep everything moist and cool. Now, you wanna keep these very moist. I'm going to deeply water these. I'm going to come out pretty much every day uh, to make sure that these are moist. Same thing with our Japanese purple. Push that down. These did really good. Now what I'm going to do too, guys, I'm going to... I've got a vase in the house. I'm going to keep these going all year. Just keep trimming them. So next year I'll have slips. Rochelle thinks they're pretty, so we'll keep them in the house and let them flower. Okay, I'm gonna cover those roots up. I might go ahead and move some of this soil down just a little. Okay, looks, looks good. I'm gonna push those down and then we're gonna water these in with the hose and we're gonna keep them moist. Hey guys, we're at the, the grow table today. Also too, we're gonna to be planting a bunch of different salad greens in our half gallon pots. We talked about that the last video. Uh, I will use the one gallon for like some bok choy. I might put like four bo baby bok choy in here. Uh, I, like I said in the last video, I just noticed that I think it's a waste of soil. The plants will grow just fine in these smaller pots. Now I am gonna be using uh, the Baker family rabbit tree dried rabbit uh, manure. Guys, bakerfamilyrabbittree.com. Check them out. They're wonderful subscribers. They sent us this as a gift. Um, I'm going to mix this in with the top couple inches of soil. Um, and I really am excited about using this product to see how it works. Uh, but if you want to go to their website and try their product, give it a try. So I'm just going to sprinkle some of this in each of the pots. We'll water it in. And then we'll start planting our seeds. Get that watered in. The weather's been nice. It's gonna actually be 90 degrees today, guys. I know it's crazy. It's a, it's a little spike, a little spring heat spike, I call it. We're gonna get back down to the 70s for highs. I just don't want a repeat of last year. I don't want to go through that anymore. Now, those of you in the South, remember last year. It was brutal. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and plant our seeds. We're going to put microgreens in this tray. Right Guys, I like growing uh, microgreens. It's called the Jazzy Mix, a botanical interest. It's just a bunch of mixed microgreens. I'm going to lay them in there he heavy. Lay them in there really thick, beautiful microgreens that add a little bit of pizzazz and flavor to your salad. When I was a chef, we used to use this a lot on salads for garnish. Just really fun to do. See how heavy I'm laying that in? Okay. Now what I'm going to do is when I plant my grow table, I like to top it 
with some soil and horticultural vermiculite that kind of keeps the moisture in. So that's what I'm gonna do as I grow all of these. So I have some soil, so I'll put about a half an inch of soil and then a little bit of vermiculite. Okay guys, a light amount of soil. And then some vermiculite. just gonna cover it nice and it's gonna keep it moist guys I mean it's I'm out here right now and it's like 80 degrees already it's gonna be 90 degrees today I want to get that watered real quick so it doesn't blow it blow away so I'm gonna grab the hose and we're gonna water that in but anytime you guys you grow stuff in pots you might want to try this method that really helps keep the moisture and the, the seeds especially on greens okay we're gonna move on and we're gonna start planting other lettuces. All right, guys. In a few pots, we're gonna do this crimson cosmic mix. I had to get it, it just looks so cool. And these are pelleted seeds, guys, you see? They're pelleted. So I'm really just gonna put about six to eight Maybe I'll just do five. I don't want to overcrowd the pot. Push them down a little bit. And the nice thing about the grow table, guys, is you don't have to bend down. You can come out here. You can harvest. Kind of like you're at the salad bar. And I'll do, I'll do one more. These are fun. So about five to six seeds, give them room to, to grow. And then I'll put some vermiculite over and we'll water them in. Be real gentle. That vermiculite will absorb that liquid and it'll expand a little bit too. Okay, we're gonna keep going. Gonna, we've got these in the ground, but I wanna go ahead and put one in a pot. I'll put about four seeds, the purple lady bok choy. Very small seed, ooh. Well, you know what guys, I'll go ahead and just sprinkle them really thin. And if I have to thin them, that's fine. At least I don't have to get on my hands and knees to do that. So I just put some in there I'm gonna go ahead and put a little soil. So I'm just putting the different varieties in all these pots, guys. And we'll water it in. All right, guys, we got some of the grow table planted. I need to get some more lettuce seeds. Miss Rochelle likes oak leaf. I just need to go to the nursery and pick some up. Uh, but we've got spinach, we've got the crimson, we've got the microgreens, bok choy. This is gonna be the salad bar, guys. Uh, but no, thanks for hanging out. We're doing great. Um, we're gonna be doing a lot of projects this weekend. Um, we're gonna be getting a huge six yards of decomposed granite. We wanna do redo all the walkways and everything. Sometimes the weeds are coming up. Um, it's warm. It's 84. It's going to be 90 today and then temperatures will go back down to normal But I appreciate you guys so much. We got so many new subscribers uh, This is the time of the year where we are in it. We're in the garden. We're gonna teach you as much as we possibly can um, And hey, I'm still learning too. You know, I've been gardening Michelle and I for a little over 30 years here uh, in Central Texas um, But you can never stop learning <laughs> Do us a favor guys Hit the like button, share on your Facebook with your friends if they want to learn how to garden too in this climate. Um, and we do appreciate you guys very much. Um, thank, thank God we're going to be getting some rain. It's happening. Um, 
We are going to get a cool front, so temperatures are going to go back to normal, upper 70s, maybe lower 60s. But I'm looking out in the forecast, and it looks like five, six days of nice rain. So until next time, guys, we do appreciate you. God bless. Take care.